How can I trick these kids? Yeah. They're on to me. Alright guys, any questions from... We got into 6-1 last time. What? Uh, did you not hear me or did you not understand or not believe? One of those shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked and appalled. You're like moving so fast. Nope. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. Be careful, you bring up rates of change of the uh, account teacher. Uh, 5.327. I should have heard Number 27? Yeah. Okay, so, and this is before we know U sub. So, I mean, uh, I'm going to give it, I know it's got U's in it, but it doesn't mean it's U sub. U plus 2, U minus 3, DU. And it's not from 2 anything, right? They're on 0 to 1. So, you can't, you can't just. Start doing okay. That's one half u squared plus two u. Yeah, I want to screw that. No, so, right. I mean, even if you add a product that you have to take derivatives of, you have to apply the product rule. Integrals are worse. Yeah. So all you got to do is foil. Yeah. The opposite of what some of you guys are saying. It's already factored. <laughs> so simplify, right? U squared minus u minus six, and then that's nice. It's a nice polynomial, right? Is that cool? I just want to make sure that I'm doing some trick that I was missing. And like no trick. Yeah, this is the whole thing, that same old theme that keeps coming up. Simplify first if you can. I like it. Cool. Anything else from homework? Yes. 36. Yeah. 36. The, the 3z one? Yeah. Uh, Alright. Uh, so it's all about the truly functional part. There's a, there's a constant part of this, and, and then there's a constant part to this. So I want to start breaking this thing up. If I can put it in this form, z to some power, then... That's easy. Uh, can we do that? Yeah, totally, yeah. So this will be, so break it apart. Uh, the square root of 3 times z to the negative 1 half, I like it. And if you really want to, you can just take that out. It's constant. You can just factor it out of the infinite sum. So constants can go in and out of an integral all day long. It's just Factoring them out or putting them into infinite sums. Ooh. The functional piece, now, now this, I have no problem saying this is easy. Right? How do I integrate? So it's rad 3 times, how do I integrate this? Good. It'll be z to the 1 half times 2. Cool. Is that alright? You guys doing enough of these to get that idea? That's how you always do it. That's why I do the power first and then just reciprocate out front what that new power is. From 18. 1 to 18. I like it. Cool. Then you do that. All right. Okay. Um, uh, 6.146. 46. I like it. So this is uh, 6.146, and it gives you the birth rate, birth rate of some population, 2200. Point zero zero two four T per year, and the death rate is where do you go? Fourteen sixteen E to the point 
zero, zero. No, zero. It's just one zero. Oh, oh, it's not two zeros up here. It's just one. It's going to say one eight. If that was bigger than that, that means that they're dying off at a bigger rate. Okay. Yeah. Suck for this little country. A few years, there's just no way there. How's this ready for? I wouldn't live there. Something happened. Um, where do you go? Find the area between these curves for zero to ten. All right. So uh, zero to ten. All right. So this is the relatively well. This is the new stuff, right? Um, what do you have to check for uh, for these kind of problems? Finding the area between. So I remember you said like the license, right? Yeah, see where they cross, and if they cross somewhere in the interval you're interested in, your integral has to be broken up, because your integral always has to have the first function as the top function, so if they switch, you've got to have a separate integral for that. So does that happen? If you set these two equal to each other, do you know how to solve this? Will they ever equal each other is a good other question. No, why not? Because T is the same, so they're different values. So uh, this start at, at T zero, where does this start? Twenty two hundred. At T zero, this is at this is growing faster than this one. So this starts above that one and it's growing faster than this one. This will never catch that. Yeah, so they're not gonna cross. So thank God I don't have to try to solve this. All right, so you at the very least, you could put it in a calculator and see, but um, on a test or something, I'm going to give you something you can actually solve, and you know I'm going to have a place, a place where they cross in the interval, just because I'm evil. Um, so yeah, so obviously which one's on top? B. Yeah, B, right? So I do integral 0 to 10, uh, 2200, so, so where where'd we have some trouble? Minus. What is this a rough estimate of? This is my birth rate, this is my death rate. So if I take the difference between them and integrate over 10 years. Your population growth? Yeah, I'm going to get the pure population growth, right? And now, of course, you could include immigration out, immigration in, those are different rates, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Sure. And these rates themselves are probably not constant over those 10 years, right? So that's, who knows? Anyway, all that's too much. Uh, do we have trouble with integrating this? Uh, uh, the 2200 can come out, I can split these intervals up if I wanted to. Is that cool? Because it's minus, so I could put it out, I can split these intervals up. Did not like terms, so I'm too excited about that. How do I integrate? What's, what's this integral? E to the AT. DT. What's that interval going to be? It's got to be E to the AT. And that can't change. It's derivative is itself. But I have to account for some constant, right? Yeah, plus C. So it's got to be over A. Cool. So your A here is 0.024. So it's going to be this over 0.024 times 2200. And this over point, right? Yeah, yeah, so those intervals aren't that bad. You could use U sub, but my point of trying to show you this before I even showed you U sub is you don't need U sub for this. That's extra shit. That's extra work. You could figure out that you need to divide by whatever that is, because that's what would come out if you took a derivative. If you want to kill it. So you said just area to represent population? Yeah, if I figure out. Now, this by itself, what would that show me? Over 10 years, it would show me. The total number of births, because that I integrate a birth rate. This is that net change thing. If I integrate a rate, I get the total amount that it changed by. So a birth rate integrate is the total change in births, so the total amount of births. Death rate, total amount of deaths. Subtract them, it's a net population change. Right? A uh, very crude estimate, because I'm leaving out other factors, right? Cool, I like it. We just assume they built a... Uh, don't do that. We sent Trump to an island. So we built a wall around the island. So there's no, nobody escaping and nobody coming in. Uh, so this would be purely what it is. 
I'm almost sure this would be higher, but oh. <laughs> oh man, am I letting my views on certain political parties out? Oh, too damn bad. <laughs> um, this is an ardent Trump supporter in here. I, 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 I'm not sure what to do. I was about to say I apologize, but I apologize for your education. Um, sorry. So, anything else from from uh, stuff before we get into six two? All right. So, uh, thankfully, nowadays we have uh, the ability to do 3D stuff on the computer. Because otherwise, you guys would go insane. I mean, I remember my, oh God, my math teacher was so horrible at graphing and they would make something and they say, if you squint at it you could see it. Oh my god, no. So the idea here is, and this is kind of a limited technique, but it's a kind of a first step approximation of some shapes. So these, the shapes that this type of, the next two sections are going to work with are any shapes that can be uh, rotated. It's got a rotational symmetry. What do I mean by that? If I cut it anywhere and turn it and cut it, those cross sections will be the same. So it's a... Uh, Rotationally symmetric, because that makes sense. So, so if I have some function, let's say the top part of a circle or something. Obviously, if I rotate this, it's not quite the whole circle, though, is it? All right. But if I rotate this around, I get sort of a football, don't I? So can you imagine rotating? In fact, here's something even better than imagining. I told you, I, a student of mine from a while back sent me this. So if I rotate it around the axis... Yeah, and then you can put that up. It's a little decorous. Um, so I told him about that in class. I said, back when I was a little kid, we had these decorations, and she like sent them to me, a couple of these. Like, oh, that's so awesome. So now I use these as a visual. So I'm rotating around. In this case, I'm talking about rotating around the x-axis, right? So if I have a more general kind of shape, and I rotate it around the x-axis, maybe it would come out to be like, this here. Oh, cool. All right, stay with me. So we have some function. There's the original function, uh, f of x here. There's the, that black line up top is the original function, right? And then I rotated that around the x-axis. And now what I'm curious about is what's the volume of that shape that I just created, right? So it should be somehow related to areas. Uh, you can't quite do the area of the function and do something directly with it. So what we do is, because of this rotational symmetry, what will every cross-section look like? If I cut it, what will that cross-section look like if I look right at it? It's got to be exactly circular because I did rotate. So any point on this function, that point, uh, in fact, uh, let me click this button. And it'll do. Can I zoom in on this? No, as I zoom in, it stays the same. It's, it's just mocking me. All right. So there's a cross section. Circular. Auto run. No, I don't want you on. And then here's the radius. How big will the radius of that circle be before I click on it? From the top of the radius. What's the radius? What's the value of the radius at some point x between a and b? f of x. That's how far out it's got to go. It's got to go out until it hits the original function, right? That's the radius. So any position, so that's going to be the radius. Put the radius button. And the area, I like it just shades in the circle. Ooh, that's neat. 
So the radius is f of x, the, the area of any circle, any cross section will be pi times f of x squared. Ooh, right? Whoever the hell the radius is, the area of the circle is pi r squared. So that's not a major, that's a, ooh, wow, that's amazing. So what I want to do, so that's a single circle's area as a cross section of that whole thing. So how do I get the volume then? I add up all the circles. I integrate the area from A to B. So I integrate, let me see if they actually get it. I think they do. So I integrate, so we get the volume, look at that volume, little box, bam. I integrate from A to B, the areas, dx. It's almost too nice to believe if you let it be. So, so realize, again, like I said earlier, this only works if my shape has actually got that rotational symmetry to it, right? The minute it doesn't have that, this doesn't quite work, but it's a good first approximation if it's close. Okay, how are we doing so far? But does it make physical sense? It almost, if you let it, it almost makes too much sense to believe that it's part of this insane class, right? You just find circle areas and then add up all the circles. And what's, if I have an infinite number of circles, what do I have to use? Integration, right? That's how I do infinite sums. All right, so let, let's, let's try one. Uh, let's see. Because they don't give me a function there, do they? They don't tell me what it is. Oh, dorks. All right. So let's try... Yeah, let's do this. Let's try... Uh, f of x equal to... Um, what you got, Jeff? I don't know. Let's say 4 minus uh, x minus 2 squared. Then I look neat. So why did I do that? Well, so I'm going to graph it. And this is going to be, they got to tell me the boundaries of this. Uh, so we're going to start nice. We're going to start, it's, it's actually hitting the x-axis. There's going to be some situations where it won't, and there'll be a hollow part in the middle. If I didn't let that thing actually, the area hit the x-axis, there would have been a hollow part in the middle. I don't know if you guys quite see what I'm saying. Okay. So, uh, at 2, this thing has a value of what? 4. 4, I like it. And that happens to be the maximum. At 0, what is this? 0. zero. So I kind of created a function that was an upside-down parabola that had nice x-intercepts, right? Uh, and of course, at four, since it's symmetric, it's got to be zero again. Okay, so that's the region that I'm talking about is the region bounded by this parabola in the first quadrant, and that's a horrible thing that I'll survive. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate it. Now, now notice when I rotate it around the x-axis. How do I locate a disk? We call this the disk method. So we call these disks. How do I locate a disk? That's a weird question, and you're like, you plan. No. What variable do I use to locate a disk? X. X, the x I could have a function that's like this, and I could rotate it around the y-axis, and then how would I locate a disk? Y. On the y, using y. It would be dy then. This integral would be integral dy. So there's a... One really nice thing about disk method, and, sh and the other method we're going to talk about is the opposite, so it's kind of nice. Uh, disk method says if you are rotating around the x-axis or something parallel to the x-axis, it'll be dx. Around the y-axis, it'll be dy. Right, we're just getting into this, so... But doesn't it, that's because, how do I locate this? Where do they sit? They sit on the x-axis if I'm rotating around the x-axis. Or vice versa, right? So that's going to help me set up my integral in the first place. Obviously, if you set your integral up wrong, you're dead before you even start integrating, right? Okay, okay. So that's number one. Um, number two, now, so you don't have to draw 3D things, thank God. But if I did rotate this around this axis, I'm not even going to try. Here it would be the mirror image, right? Just roughly. Very roughly. Oh, well. Oh, good job. Sorry. 
What? Here's my egg. How's that look? Oh, for me, that's awesome. Um, so here would be an example of, so here's X, here's an example of a disk. Let's see if I can make this roughly decent. There, so that tells me where that should be. All right, that's a little bit better. So there's a disk there, right? Is that cool? So you don't have to graph 3D, thank God. Unless you can, you want to show off, do it. Uh, and by disk sucks, but can you, can you, can you, you with me on this a little bit? All right. Uh, so what is my radius going to be? What's the radius here? Yeah, the radius is f of x. I like it. Uh, and you can imagine, if I didn't let this go, if I, if I would have said, no, you can't, you have to stop at 1, then the radius, uh, if I was rotating around this, the radius would have been f of x minus 1, for example. Uh, so that's going to be in our future. The, if the axis of rotation moves, my radius has to change with it. The radius is how far away I am from the middle from where I'm rotating it around. So at the beginning, we're gonna rotate everything around the x or the y axis, make it easy. And then we're gonna incorporate, well, what if I'm rotating around some other axis, some off axis thing? Oh shit. We're not gonna rotate things diagonally, don't worry. Uh, all right, and that's really all I need. Uh, so how do I set up this integral? It'll be the integral from what to what? The x values have to go from zero to four. Pi times 4 minus x minus 2 squared. Square. Square. I like it. Yes. All right. Now this you can obviously simplify. Cool. Um, take, a pi out. take a pi out. I love it. Kick ass. So you can always just put the pi out front if you want to. That's fine. will be 0 to 4, bring a pi out, 4x minus x squared, squared, dx. That's scary. That's some Silent Hill stuff, man. Let me go away. Bring. So when it's rotated around an axis, it's almost too nice to believe how simple the setup is for disk method. Uh, so what do you get? So there you just got a foil that bad boy, right? So what do you get? You get 16x squared minus 8x cubed plus x to the fourth. Dx. Cool. All right. I mean, this is beautiful. This is almost too nice. So, of course, the method itself is relatively simple. The only way they can make it more difficult is to, number one, have different axes I'm rotating around. Number two, make the functions themselves kind of gross. Right? So I get... Integrate this, what do you get? Uh, three, three. One, one, two, What's happening? Oh. Yeah, 16x cubed over 3. Beautiful. Suck a 4 out of that bad boy is 2x to the 4th. 1 5th x to the 5th. Yeah, it sounds like some of you guys have this in a different order than me, but who cares. And then it's from 0 to 4. And then you just got a, a 0 is nice, so you got to love that with polynomials. Right. So when you throw a 4 in there, I'm just curious what this comes out to be, because we're going to try to estimate this a little bit. Well, let's see. That's just gross. Should we right. throw the pie at the end? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you just throw it all in the calculator, it doesn't really matter. Somebody's working on this, right? Because I, I, I'm not. Maybe I should be. 
Come on, Jeff, you're so lazy. Sorry. Got a room full of workers. Pi in there, this whole thing comes up to 107.233, whatever. Okay, cool. I like it. So, real quick, uh, this isn't a circle, obviously, right? Because here, like, the radius would be 4, and here the radius would be 2. You kind of with me? You kind of with me? No? Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> this is not circular, because this is parabolic, so it's not circular. And I can see that because in this direction it would be a radius of 4. If I thought this was part of a circle, I immediately see an 8. That's 4, a radius of 4, and that's a radius of 2. Is that the area? Is that the area? Or the, what is the 107? Like, what does it mean? Oh, oh, so that's the volume of this thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at, at. Okay, okay, I like it. So the one weird thing about this process is I don't ever have to graph the shape that I'm actually working with. But can you guys imagine the shape that I'm working with? It's not just a football, it's not just this. I just graphed the mirror image of this. I'm rotating this thing around. But right now I'm just talking about to estimate if that's the right answer. I'm gonna treat this like it's a sphere. So I'm just trying to figure out what the what a good estimate of the radius would be. I don't I don't know if you guys are with me at all. And this is not spherical. This is not some geometric shape that we've ever studied. You can't do this in geometry. You need calculus to be able to figure out this volume. There's no set formula for this. So that's the volume? That is the volume that you would get if you rotated this thing all the way around. If you rotate this thing around, you end up with, you know, shape like that, right? Yeah. Just like uh, you can imagine it would look... Like your decoration. Like your decoration. Sort of. My decoration is more like a pure sphere, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you get the idea, yeah. right? If I would, if this was pushed up a little bit, it would have been this sphere that kind of comes at you off the sides. This, the middle part would have been wider. I don't know. You guys get me here? I mean, so I'm rotating the shape. So to get a feel for if that's the right answer, real quick, if that's like th this would be a radius of four if I thought I was, but that's a radius of two. So let's use, let's use three. What would the volume of a sphere of radius three be? Four thirds pi three cubed. And what what's that? That would be four thirds pi three cubed would be four times pi three squared, thirty six pi, which is one hundred eight. Is that right? I did that really quick, but like 111 points something, right? What'd you get? You say four thirds pi cubed. So it's, it would be four thirds pi times the radius oh. cubed, and it said let's use three as an as a as an average of two and four, right? Am I currently right now? I am not doing something that you have to be able to do for this class, and I don't care. I'm showing you going beyond. There's no way to check your answer. You could throw this in the calculator and still not have it right because maybe you didn't set this up correctly. So to get a feel for if this feels right, I'm going to try to push this into a shape that I know. That's four, that's two, and then, and then now it's a three, a sphere of radius three. That should be close, maybe. And sure enough, that comes out to be... Yeah, yeah, that's good. If I would have gotten 28... I'm wrong. If I would have gotten 300, uh, I'm wrong. But I'm okay with being off from that a bit because I know that's not perfect what I just did, but it should be close. Okay, okay, okay. I like it. So there's several reasons I want to do that. One of them was to make sure you guys understood. I am talking about the 3D shape you end up with. What kicks ass about this process and then the next section we're going to learn is I only have to analyze the 2D shape. What did I integrate? I integrated the square of this function. Does that have any 3D aspect to it? No. So what's difficult as a student, especially going to go all the way to Calc 3, is when you set up an integral, you can't tell that the integral is identifying a 3D shape. You don't know what this integral represents. 
Because the math that I use to get here doesn't look 3D somehow, right? I don't know if you guys kind of, it's kind of cool that I just, I got this 2D shape, 2D looking function that is actually representing a three dimensional volume. It's nice. Why does that work? We know it works. Each of these are areas. And so when I integrate, I'm going to end up with a volume. So I know it works. Okay, cool, maybe, maybe, maybe. No, totally not. In fact, that's what I did there. Yeah, but if you left it in, like, if you left it in, you just have to make sure it goes everywhere. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, constants you can take out, put in. Yeah. All right. So let's try. Have a question. Sure. So, uh, like in a later quiz, are you going to ask us about like difference between like volume, with the radius that you give us, and volumes that we're approximating? No, 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 I really want to make sure you understand. I'm never going to make you on your own figure out how to do what I just did because it's, it's a little weird. But I like to tell you what I do. I mean, just to show you, because I've been through a lot of math, so I know some more of the flexibility math has. So when I'm trying to estimate my answer, if you put this in your calculator, it's going to tell you this. Yeah. But maybe I screwed this up. So I have to go back to the original to get an estimate, and there's no geometry for this shape. There's none. We created our own geometry right now with calculus, right? So that was that's a method you could use if you ever, ever, ever wanted to. And if you never do, all right, whatever. I let you know it's out there. All right, maybe, maybe. So what's what do you have to 